Welcome back to my channel, YouTube. Listen, if you're new here, please hit that subscribe button, okay? I'm a chef here in Silicon Valley, and I create videos every Wednesday and Friday. I'm telling you, you're not gonna wanna miss this, especially if you're an upcoming chef or if you're a new culinarian that just got into the field, my channel is gonna be very valuable to you. Or if you're an avid home cook or an amateur home cook, trust me, hit that subscribe button. Check out my old videos. I drop a lot of knowledge on this channel, and I think it's really beneficial, and it's free. So all you gotta do is hit that subscribe. Now, a little bit about me. I'm a chef. I've been cooking professionally for about 20 years now. I started when I was really young as a young, young lad, okay, in a diner, washing dishes, and I just worked my way up from there. I graduated culinary school with a dual associates in culinary and baking and pastry. I've had the luxury of working all across the United States from New York to DC to Chicago to Los Angeles, Las Vegas, San Francisco, you name it. I've worked with some of the best chefs and I'm telling you right now, I am giving you knowledge. Now, all that aside, okay, it's just important because I have a lot of new subscribers that I want to make sure that they know who I am. So if you're one of my OG followers, thank you. I appreciate you. And trust me, the channel's going to get a lot better. All right, but in the meantime, one of the biggest questions that I get as a chef is what type of knife should I get? What type of knife should I buy? And, um, you know, it's a common question and I completely understand the intimidation of it, right? Um, you know, there's so many different styles, there's so many different uh, cuisines, there's so many different types of knives, different steels, different handles. It can be kind of overwhelming. And so I'm going to do the best I can within a nutshell to try to give you my best advice on purchasing a new knife, all right? So jumping right in, I think what's really important is to take in consideration there was a time in my career where knives were so important to me, more important than anything else I could ever imagine. Now this was when I was a cook, I was a line cook. And trust me, I used to spend my days off sharpening my knife, I used to save up my money and purchase the most expensive knives, and I used to baby them, I didn't let anybody touch them, I did a lot of research, I did, I, you know, I, I babied the hell out of them, I was really into it. I was, you, I was what you could call a knife geek. And let's just say times have changed. So as I've grown throughout my career, um, especially with being at an executive level or a management level, you know, priorities kind of shift and change. Although I still love knives, I'm just not a knife geek anymore. And I think that's really important to state because the way I'm going to explain to you is like I'm explaining to my five-year-old kid. I think it's really important so you can digest it. I'm not going to get into the, the deep niches of terms and methodologies and stuff like that. So just take that in consideration if you're watching this video and you're already a professionally trained chef or you're a knife geek, trust me, this video is probably not for you. And I don't mean to offend you, but I am literally gonna put it in layman's terms because that's what regular people need. And you know, I'm not gonna get into all the different types of steels and all that. Okay, without rambling too much, first things first, you have to decide what type of knife that you want to use. Okay, now the things that I try to tell people the most is go to Sir La Tab or William Sonoma. All right, do not buy a knife there, but go and check them out. They have high quality knives that are very expensive, but they will let you feel them and touch them. And this is what's important. And let me give you an example. All right, I have here, this is a Japanese style knife, okay? This is also a Japanese style knife, but this is considered a Western knife. And now in this video, I just, I am just gonna talk about Japanese knives because it's what I use, it's I'll die on this hill. I really appreciate Japanese knives, but I'm not opposed to a good Wolstoff or a Henkel or a European knife, but I'm gonna talk about Japanese knives today. So I prefer both of these. This is a Western style Japanese knife this is a regular Japanese style knife. Okay, so there's a difference. This one has a handle that the tang, the tang is the actual extension of the blade that goes right about here, okay? It's called a hidden tang. This knife has a tang that goes all the way down to the back of the handle, all right? Making this knife a little bit more useful for me in the kitchen. So when you think of Japanese knife, you think delicate, Finesse, super fine dining, nice, ni nice chopping, no like banging on the cutting board or cutting through bones. All right, but I think what's really important is to figure out which handle feels comfortable in your hand. That's why I say go to Williams and go to Sir La Tab. They will let you hold the knife 
all right, and feel it. Okay, so we got that aside. Now, whether you decide to choose French or German, that's completely up to you, and that's the reason why I'm making this video. There's two types of handles that are the most common, and I'm gonna try to get the close up on here. Um, so let's just say we have A and B, all right? These are the two most common types of handles. If you're gonna go with the Wusthof, this would be the handle, but it, it's obviously a little bit more thicker, I would say. But I think what's really important is, for me, if I, I have both of these style of knives, this one right here with the oval handle, I'm not gonna tell you the technical term, but the oval handle is way more comfortable in my hand. And also this knife is nice and light, but this knife is pricey. So what I suggest, is hold the knife in your hand, whatever knife it is, and feel it, right? You want to feel it and make sure that it's comfortable in your hand and that it's well balanced. Okay, that aside. Next, if you've never bought a knife before, if you've never sharpened a knife before, what I recommend, and this I will go to the grave on this, go to Target, go to Walmart, go to Kmart, go to the Asian store, Safeway, Publix, H-E-B, wherever you're at, buy a knife there, okay? It's gonna be soft steel, and then you want to practice sharpening it. Now, if you're gonna start in a professional kitchen, then I would highly suggest with starting with a Mercer or a Victoria Knox, okay? These knives are readily available. I'll leave links down in the description, right? These knives are very inexpensive, but they're not a long-term knife, okay? This is a knife that you use for six months to a year. You can hold on to it, for a long time, but we call this in the industry, we call these knives bangers, right? These are the like um, readily available uh, restaurant knives that the restaurant would probably provide. They're really easy to sharpen and really easy to maintain in their NSF, which means uh, they're, they don't uh, harbor any bacteria. Highly recommend, do not go out and blow your money, your bankroll on an expensive knife if you do not know how to sharpen. I think this is very important, okay? so. I'm going to talk about the way I like to sharpen. I'm not really a fan of uh, electric sharpeners or diamond steels. What I'm a fan of is the Japanese whetstone, okay? Now, here's the thing. It's super subjective, right? Because I would, as a chef, I would much rather you have a sharp knife all the time than be intimidated by the Japanese whetstone and not want to sharpen at all. Then you use your honing steel and blah, blah, blah. So I think what's really important is to find your preferred method of sharpening that's going to be consistent out throughout your whole career or your whole life, okay? Whatever that is. Now, for me, it's Japanese whetstones. And I'll be honest with you, back in the day, I had natural uh, Japanese stones, one broke, and then that was it for me. So what I focus on now is um, you know, the whole set, right? So I have a few sets. I have a set at work and I have a set at home and I keep them separated. And just to show you, um, and this is not sponsored at all, it's just uh, what I use personally. Um, I have these two double-sided stones, okay? So um, I think what's really important is, and we'll talk about the beginner here, is you can get stone off Amazon for less than $20 and you can start sharpening right away. Now, I think that is more valuable to buy a sharpening stone and a very cheap knife to learn how to sharpen, but you're still able to do your job. The knives I personally use, I don't, I'm not going to sit here and say this is sponsored or, um, you know, that I recommend getting these. You know, the thing is, is I'm a chef and I've come across a lot of knives over the years and for my home use, I use Mayavi, okay? My favorite home use knife, my go-getter is this Miyabi, sorry, Miyabi Birchwood. This is the 10 inch chef knife. The knife is very well balanced and very well built, okay? Um, I love this fact about the oval handle. Like I said before, this is super comfortable for me in my hand. I feel like it's really easy to sharpen. The knife is or built very well. And that's the benefit you have with some of these commercial knives. They're just built to last. Um, I use the Birchwoods at my house, but I also have the classics. So uh, the, these classic knives are also a really good choice. I bought these on a whim, only thinking they were gonna last a year, and I've had them for over seven years, okay? It's been since 2013 when they first came out. Now for work, I use a different type of knife, okay? For work, I use Mizono, and the reason why I use Mizono is because it's a, it's, it's a hard steel, and um, I you prefer the UX10, the stainless, but I also have 
this carbon steel knife and I want to talk about it real quick because you have to make a decision whether you want to use carbon steel or stainless steel and I will tell you one thing carbon steel is my preferred blade for work but it takes a lot of maintenance so I went from having you know five to ten carbon blades to now three so I have literally three knives that are that are carbon and um, you know the thing here's another one this is a Yanagi and um, you know they're all soldiers but the thing is is they, they you have to maintain them they get patinaed and uh, anything you cut with lemon citrus or acid uh, tomato on uh, you know it, it, it just it's tough you have to wipe the knife immediately and uh, if you get rust spots you have to scrub it off and I think what's really important is you have to take that in consideration nobody wants their food cut with a rusty knife so for the kitchen I prefer mostly stainless steel but when I'm butchering fish or meat I'm telling you right now I'm always reaching for this carbon the Mizono carbon so this is my go-to for like fish butchery uh, any slicing uh, sashimi I love sashimi with this one and uh, that's pretty much it so I also want to talk about these uh, the Japanese style knives which um, you know I totally forgot I totally forgot what knife maker this is but I really like this knife but I'll be honest this is another um, carbon steel knife and honestly the thing is is you, you just it's not meant it's meant for delicate food delicate think about that all the time so um, when it comes to the difference between Japanese and Western style Japanese knives I always shoot for Western that's just my personal preference for the avid chef home cook once you develop the knife skills and knife sharpening then you figure out your own path in which direction you want to go to so uh, I'll scan we'll, we'll uh, do a little b-roll of my knife set but you know I don't suggest getting any of these I really think for the beginner you need to focus on sharpening learning how to maintain a knife and don't spend your all your money on a really expensive knife okay so if you made it this far thanks for watching i'm gonna leave the description box full of the links and all the information that you need to know if your first time buying a knife or if especially with the sharpening stone so just remember if you take one thing away from this video knives are so subjective it depends on the user it depends on your environment there's a lot of things that you have to take in consideration so depending on your situation my overall suggestion is to buy a cheaper knife right and then learn how to sharpen it first before you upgrade because using that cheaper knife you're going to figure out which handle you like right so the cheaper knives target uh target walmart fabriware right get a cheap banger and literally learn how to sharpen it so buy the stones i'm going to leave the set of stones here I'll leave the set of stones that I personally use it's really cheap for 40 bucks you get the whole set two double-sided stones a strop block a holder a rubber mat like I mean you get everything and it's worth it um, cool thanks for watching